In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create an architecture concept sequence diagram. We'll be using Photoshop and any 3D modeling software that you're comfortable with. In this case, we'll be using Rhino. Let's get started by creating a cube. With your cube created, we're now going to duplicate it using the copy command and slide it over to the other side. Now I'm just going to explode this cube so that we've got access to all of the faces and edges. I'm going to turn the points on by typing PON and now I can highlight both of these points here and I'm going to stretch them out in a plan view. This is going to give it a twisting motion. This is the first technique in the sequence for the form. I'm now going to copy it over again the exact same distance. And now we can use our third technique in this sequence. And I'm just going to extrude it up. And these techniques are all subjective. You can do these however you would like. However your form progresses is going to be how you're going to showcase these different techniques. And so for me, I'm going to now create a void, let's say, inside this tower. I'm going to delete that section from that form. And now we've got a void. Again, we can create another copy of this form and this is going to be the fifth step in that sequence. And now what I'm going to do is just twist it up again using the twist command. I'm just gonna rotate this round a little bit. There we go, that's quite a funky shape. Now for the final form, I'm going to use the offset surface command to create an offset version of this tower. And you're gonna see that's just going to thicken up all the walls and the ceilings and the roofs. When really this is just a concept diagram, there's not gonna be those things, but I'm just gonna explode this one more time, delete that bottom bit so it doesn't show up in our diagram. And now you can see we've got a sequence of different forms which shows how we get from a cube to our final twisting tower. Now what we're gonna to need to do is bring this into Photoshop because that's where we're going to take the rest of this. So I'm going to set the view to parallel and make sure that it's not in a perspective view. And once it's in a parallel view, I can also use the isometric command to make sure that it is an isometric 3D view. There we go, you can see that we've now got all of these in an isometric view. Now all I'm going to do is render this out and I'm going to change a couple of settings. I'm gonna give it a white background and I'm going to change some other things just to make sure that this looks okay when we're rendering it out. And if you wanted to, you could add materials to this inside of your rendering software. And I'm just using the Rhino renderer here, so it's not fantastic. Uh, if you're using something like Enscape, it would look a lot better. You can go ahead and save out that render and then bring that render into Photoshop. So now we've got our render inside of Photoshop with a white background. By pressing M or coming up to the top here, I'm going to use the marquee tool to select the first form, right click it, and go layer via cut. Now this is going to put that on its own layer, which is what we want. I'm then gonna go back to our render layer. I'm just gonna rename this as render and I can rename this as form one. Come back to our render layer and do the same thing. Right click layer via cut and there we can call that form two. Come back again and do this for the remaining four. Now on each of these, you can see there's a bit of a gray background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete each of them by using the magic wand tool, pressing W to select each of them and delete those gray backgrounds. So now we've got all of these on separate layers, which is what we want. They're all named form one, two, three, four, etc. I'm just gonna bring these down until they're all in line. We want the bottom to all line up. Press control R to bring up the rollers up the top here. Bring down a ruler so that we can then line all of these up on the same line or the same horizontal axis. Now I'm just gonna space these out a bit. I'm gonna pull this out, say, to that 47 point mark and do the same for this one here. So make sure they're exactly the same apart. Pull this one out to the 47 point mark. This one again, so that they're all at an equal distance. I'm just gonna put them to the center of our canvas. And now you can see we've got sequence one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm actually just gonna label these from one to six. I'm gonna make them all a gray. 
Now you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And from here, you can really use your own creativity to create this and make it look however you'd like. What I'm going to do next is just add a bit of a background to it so that it looks pretty decent. There we go, we've got a bit of a background. Might change all of these texts to white. Let's see how that looks, that might change later. Now I'm thinking I want a stroke on each of these forms. So I'm gonna select form one. I'm going to go down to effects and use stroke. I'm going to use a dark gray stroke with a size of two. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to hold down alt and click on the stroke effect in the layers panel and just copy that to each of these forms and you'll see that that puts it on the forms which is good. That just gives it a bit of a definition against this background. What I also like to do is group these up. I'm just going to select all of them, click the first one, click the last one holding shift and control G to group all of them. And we'll call that forms and then we can do the same for the background. Highlight all of them, control G and call this background. It's a gr great habit to get into to group up all your stuff in Photoshop. So now what I want to do is add a couple of arrows to showcase what each of these strategies that we've done are. For example, number two, we're twisting it. So I'll use arrows to show that it's twisting. Number three is being extruded or pulled up. So I'll use arrows to showcase that. Number four being voided. Number five being twisted. And then number six, being extruded or offset as well. So let's go ahead and add in those arrows. There we go, now we're showing that sequencing with arrows, but it still might not be clear what each and every step is. So what we can do is add a bit of text showing what they are. So there we go, we've got it saying twist, pull, void, twist again, and then offset. What I might also do is for the last step being the final form is change this to a yellow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find a nice yellow. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna change the six to that yellow as well. So I'm not gonna use the exact same one, but that's good enough. So now we've got a sequencing diagram that clearly and concisely shows what each and every step of our strategy and our thinking and our ideas is. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.